Hey guys, unfortunately it's me again, and I for one am all about cutting corners, especially since I'm not really the best in animating. However, I still need some quality animation from time to time for my projects, so I usually default to downloading motions, mixing them together and editing them as I go. However, over the past couple of years I've used motion capture more and more and figured out that it is crazy expensive to get a motion capture suit. Ask me how I know. However, technology has improved more and more and there are more and more ways that you can use cameras for motion capturing as well. Since I already have the plus plan for Rococo, I thought I'd check out their double cam setup and see if it's actually any good for me, especially since I saw a lot of videos on how cool it is and how well it works. So before you spend, I think 200 bucks a year to test out this new feature because it is locked behind a paywall, I'm going to test it out for you. First of all, obviously, there's a lot of things that you need to do. We are going to the double cam feature and create a new scene. Let's do a little bit of setup. And this took me actually quite a while because the web interface did have problems getting all of my camera data. And sometimes you just have to give no permissions and reload, 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 reload. Once it has been working and fixed, you can see that it guides you through the process quite easily. It tells you, oh, do you fit between the lines? Make sure that you do this and this. And the documentation is very thorough. And uh, spoiler alert, I didn't read it the first time I did it, fix it later on, so bear with me. But I did purposefully choose clothing that makes motion capturing a little bit easier. So you see that my top and my bottoms are always separated from the background. It is not too loose. It's not too, too tight either. So it should give pretty good contrast. On the floor, there's a lot of light. I fixed that as well and tried to make the best out of whatever I got there. The calibration process is actually quite easy once you set up the cameras. You get the checkerboard and the paper that is laying on the floor. And this checkerboard, you have to hold it into the camera on a specific place. It tells you where. And again, my fault, the first time I did this, I did not back it up with a stronger carton or anything else. So keep that in mind. We're going to fix the problem later on. Once it's all calibrated, it looks for the marker on the floor. And once this is done, you can check if the floor is perfectly set. And if it is, you are good to go. So technically, it's not a very difficult workflow and pretty easy to set up. Now, I did motion capture two scenes. I, for one, think it is more valuable to check out how motion capturing does with subtle movements and not just big action movements, but like talking, talking with each other, interacting with each other. So the first scene that I captured was just a little bit of conversation, presenting, uh, presentation and have lots of subtle movements, a bit of rotations in there just to see how viable it is for stuff that is not just pure action. The second motion was more sporty, was more uh, action-y and I did change my outfit a little bit. I pulled my shirt into my pants and wear red shoes. I think I have a clip somewhere. However, once you are done with your recording, you can go into the editing suit and trim a little bit from the beginning and the end and then put it to processing. I took the same footage and while I was waiting for the processing to happen, I put it into deep motion as well. Uh, just to have a little bit of a comparison and see how the workflow is there. Move AI would be another company that is potentially cool with all of this, but they are still in beta or like crazy expensive or proprietary with iPhones. Um, didn't want to check that out, so I'll stick to Deep Motion and Rococo for this comparison. Drum roll, please. And these are the results. Honestly, pretty bad. And I mean, like, oh, you know, it's, it needs a bit of work and all of this. No, it's actually pretty bad, like unusable bad. I wouldn't, I wouldn't use that or like even try to save that. But I, it, it bugged me, right? I'm like, oh, I saw those YouTube videos and they were so amazing and it worked so well. So I must have done something wrong. Clearly, I must have done something wrong. So I went back to the calibration process because as in every motion capturing, calibration is key, is definitely key. Back to the drawing board. You see that I'm already in my new outfit and I did the calibration again and again. And this time I read through the manual again and I was like, oh yeah, sure. Maybe I should harden up the, the checker map and put it behind my iPad. So it's it's more sturdy, it's more stable and it was. And I did the calibration process a couple of times un until I was really sure that it's working. Same with the floors. I even, when I saw that it's not quite lining up, I gave it some help. I reduced the light even more. I put some extra markers on the floor with this 
with this duct tape, this colored black colored duct tape that I've laying around to give it more direction, to give it more places to hold on to more references. So I thought I'd make it as easy for the system as possible. It took me over an hour to calibration back and forth. So I really took my time with it and tried to take as much consideration of the system as I possibly could. It took me, it took me a long time to finally get to a result of this floor prediction that was somewhat acceptable, I have to say. I see on the left side, I still see some bending, but I thought that should be all right. But it definitely shows that calibration with the checkerboard is a step that you guys should definitely take serious and take your time with. Okay, time for my second recording. You can see that I combined both of these. First, some a bit of talking and then a little bit of stretching and a bit of, little bit of faster and quicker movement just to have a good comparison of what it can do. Now, we're going back to the processing and just wait a little bit. All right, after the processing is done. Oof, that's actually still rough. That is still rough. So again, not something that I would use for production at any kind. And I'm still somewhat in, in, in denial because I saw those videos online and they were amazing, right? So there, something in this process is that I am doing wrong. However, I do have to say that even my experience with motion capturing with the Rococo motion capture suit left quality to be desired to put it to put it lightly so i am not a biggest fan of this system and this uh this workflow but maybe maybe it's me right maybe it's me and uh, it's just bad footage or it's just bad bad calibration on on my part however Rococo also offers a one cam solution, right? Like if you have one cam, you can upload a video and motion capture from this. So I took the same footage that I recorded here, right? Upscaled it to 10, 1080 and fed it into the system and wanted to know what is coming out of it. That's exactly what I did. And this is the result. Um, again, not what I expected. Or do I have to say, at this point, maybe exactly what I expected. But I still gave gave Rokoka the benefit of the doubt. I was still like, it's it has to be me. It like I've I have eyes, I saw those videos, it has to be me. Then I completely forgot that I put the exact same video that I uploaded to Rococo to deep motion, right? Like the exact same video, not like a, another cut or anything, but the exact same video that I put into Rococo, I also put in deep motion. So the result of deep motion that was done with processing and I just forgot about it in the background looked like this. And that's crazy. That's usable. That's night and day, in my opinion. So I'm torn apart a little bit because I still believe that there was a mistake on my side, that there is something that I did wrong, but I'm not quite sure what. I did try to take my time. I was not really convinced about this two cam solution. As of this point, as of my trying, I think I will run another test at a later date with another with another lighting situation. Maybe those light straps at the floor did mess up calibration, who knows? But at this point in time, use other results as other results. And I guess we see each other in the next video. Thank you for sticking around.